Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage slash food is ah, minestrone cup of soup. Mm, I've got a bit of a crew on there as well. Very tasty. So, in a previous video, we were um, <laughs> exploiting unintended game mechanics, as in the targeting system, and it showed that we could make a vessel that was just really big. Um, a, just a big pile of struts and debris, essentially, and a lot of the times the shots would hit that, and instead of it um, blowing up the main section, we would be able to keep fighting. Now, obviously, it did have its disadvantages. It was quite overweighted. We could have probably built it better in terms of the distribution of all the explodey bits, but overall, it was quite fun and interesting. However, I now have a problem. Actually, I've got a multitude of problems that I won't repeat here. However, my specific problem today is to do with uh, one weapon. Let's go over to Design and Fight and Airship Editor, and we're going to go down to Flamethrowers. Now, when it comes to having a problem with fire, that's something you generally don't want. It's normally suboptimal. However, in this game, we have some flamethrowers. We have the flamethrower and the giant flamethrower. And we've used these in previous builds and mess around with them, but not to any great effect. Now, I've been trying to figure out how to use these things in anger against a static defense. And that's because, quite frankly, these are stupidly powerful. If you look at the giant flamethrower, it only does 15 blast damage. Now, when you consider that something like the Gatling Gun does 6 uh, the flat cannon does 14, uh, the cannon for example, that's probably the, the sort of yardstick really, that's, so it does a piercing damage, uh, it's 50 piercing damage, actually piercing is better against static, static structures because they normally use brick walls, which normally has, on stone walls, which normally absorbs more piercing. Um, actually, no, we've got the stone wall there, which absorbs two blast and three piercing, and then the master stone wall, which is six blast and four piercing. Oh, right. interesting. Anyway, I digress. Um, so, in terms of the standard cannon there, that does piercing damage 50, and it's every 3.5 seconds. However, the giant flamethrower has 15 blast damage, and it fires 20 times a second. Um, it does have a clip, though. You can see it's 120 rounds there, and it also has a great fire arc of 120 degrees. So the idea is that it goes up to something and completely unloads a hell of a lot of damage, 300 damage a second, um, <laughs> and that means that whatever you're looking at generally disappears. It's more like a lightsaber, like a big be like a death beam rather than a sort of um, area effect flamethrower. Although I guess if you look at proper flamethrowers, they do just fire a jet of flame, don't they, rather than just like a like a uh, <laughs> some sort of strange pyrotechnic effect. So we want to make something that will be able to carry this and take on a static defense. Now there's multiple schools of thought. We could put it on a on a sort of ground um, on a ground ship and have it on say tracks and slowly trundle up to the to the ground defense. That is obviously a bit problematic because well these things are flammable. So when they get shot, they tend to break very quickly. Also, if you look at the HP it's 150. Comparing that with the cannon, that is also 100. So even though the cannon is only a, a, a size of 2x1, this thing is, uh, what is it, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4x2. Four so it's much bigger. Um, as you can see, you can fit four cannons in the same size of this thing. Um, which means that this tends to break very quickly. So you want to get it into your target as soon as possible and just start firing and do as much damage as you can. Uh, and that's why I think a ground ship probably wouldn't work because if it was on tracks, it would be too slow. If it was on legs, it would be quite good because you could really uh, charge right far forward and that would probably work out. However, I think if we put it on some sort of flying vessel, it would probably be better because we can fly up and over and obviously we'll get hit by flak, but then we're in the rear and then we'll probably take less damage. Now, in terms of cost, if we get this thing under... 2000 I would be quite happy but we'll have to see how we go now I'm going to mount both of these right at the front there the problem with these is obviously they do have a limited range um, which means that oh, what is it uh, where is it shoots troops and planes within um, 28 meters and it has a maximum range of 50 meters so yeah this is going to be quite difficult let's just see what we can do so we're going to go over to lift and I'm going to go for a large suspendium chamber I'm going to go over to propulsion, and we're going to say a large propeller as well. The idea is that we need to get this thing quite high, and we need to go quite quick. Uh, and also, we really need to think of armor and such as well. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll think about that later on. Let's bring these up like so. We're going to go over to our resources, and these things do take a lot of uh, resources. So we're probably going to put maybe even a fire... Maybe even these an ammo store each. They have a total of 100 ammo, and... Um, how much is that? That has a total of, what does it say, a clip size 120, rate of fire 20 per round, uh, shoots troops, uh, I don't know actually, 
Recommended crew is four, though, which I've just noticed there. So that already puts our minimum crew up to quite uh, <laughs> quite a high point there. In terms of this thing moving, we don't really need to move very quickly. So we could probably get away with maybe maybe a couple of uh, coal points in like so. What I'll do is I'll put them there, and then I'll put the fire extinguishers next to that, and then that should be that pretty much sorted. Uh, we need to have some crew, and we need to be able to give commands to the ship. So we're going to go over to uh, command and crew. It does say recommended eight, but as soon as we put something in, it's probably going to break that. So we'll go over to, say, quarters, and we'll put it as far back as possible like so, and then we are going to put a bridge right in front of that. In terms of this, it does say crew 12 recommended 19, so it recommends we have a lot more than that. So I'll put that there, then I'll put a quarters in like so, and then in between this, I think we'll put another one of these little fire point type things, and that will technically function technically let's uh, see how many supply hatches we need it says supply 13 is what we need so that wouldn't be able to or we wouldn't be at least one single supply hatch we'll go down and um I'm actually tempted just to shift this a little bit further forward for reasons that may become clear in but a moment. Let's do that. And then we're going to go over to our... Hmm, what armor are we going to use? Service ceiling is 247 meters. I'm going to go for heavy steel armor. That puts it at 106. Oh, sorry, 145 meters. That's perfectly acceptable. In fact, it's much higher than I actually thought, um, so that's okay. Uh, let's go for a reinforced supply hatch there and there, and that is now fine. The reason I left this sort of gap, because I want to go over to our structural, and we'll actually not structural, it'll be in, where would it be? Shapes and decoration, and then we're going to put some of these in here, just to give it a little bit more of a sort of angled look like so and so and there we go and that's what it looks like it's a big brick but pretty much all the designs i do are <laughs> like that anyway in terms of flames we will put a flame on there because why not we have a coat of arms that can go right on the back and then we can have a steel nameplate which goes there it's called rigor mortis and i'm not a big fan of that let's get rid of that and we'll name it after something mm. so Good grief, there's a lot more crunch in this soup than I thought. Hmm. What type is it? Extra chunky. What's in it? Chunks. Okay, we're going to go with the Berlin, simply because after a quick check on Google and Wikipedia, which means this information is 100% correct, because, you know, the Wikipedia is always right. Uh, <laughs> there's a guy called uh, Richard Fieldler, Fieldler, something like that. Uh, a German scientist who created the flamethrower in 1901, and who's from Berlin. There we go, let's save the design, and we will try this thing out. Let's go over to um, combat, and we'll go to day, and we can see that um, we've got a very, very... Um, guess it would be um, forestry, forested area, which means a uh, landship would not fare too well in this one. In terms of our airship, I didn't even check the, I didn't even check the price of it. Oh, 2,400. Okay, it's a little bit overpointed. Let me go to building then. And we're going to place a white lookout in there and a white lookout in there. And they are only slightly overpointed, but I think we will hopefully be all right. Let's start that immediately and go to move to there. And let's just see how quick or slow this thing is. Our initial volley, or our initial take of the volley, was not very good. You can see we are getting absolutely plastered there. But most of the shots now will be finished with. So we are now going over the flak and then coming back down, which means we have weathered the majority of the shots that we are going to take. So because we're still alive, that is good. Obviously, we do have some cannons to to contend with but we are able to uh, hopefully take those out i'm just waiting for these limbos to fire there we go i'm gonna keep going forward keep going forward and you can see it is absolutely carving this thing to bits although it's not targeting the sections that i would really want them to target there we go that's the section i want you to target thank you okay so it looks like we have um, one cannon gone there and we've got fire Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Fire in the flamethrower section, which luckily we are able to put out. Uh, you can see that most of the shots are streaming past and hitting that one there, which then caused a secondary explosion, and then there we are. Right, so it looks like we have successfully managed to destroy the majority of this thing, and as you can see, it's only got one little section left, and if that burns out, that means the whole thing's going to collapse. However, we are no longer under command, which means we can't order any movement actions, so we're going to have to hope that this long range of the flamethrower, <laughs> yeah, whatever, is going to work out. Now, this is going to be a problem. We are still getting shot, and I'm very concerned that this is not shooting these bits here. Um, it does have the arc of fire. Obviously, we have lost a flamethrower, and we did take a hell of a lot of damage by going over the top there, but you can see just how much damage this thing has caused, even though we are overpointed. Um, it might... There might be some merit to be... There might be some merit in just not going over the top and just focusing on 
attacking from the front. Obviously, the disadvantage of that is that we'd be facing against uh, two, four, five, ten cannons rather than the six, but then we also wouldn't be spending time going over that flak field, which could cause us, well, more damage than just going on a direct attack, especially if we get some secondary explosions there. But you can see just how much damage even one large flamethrower can cause. Um, so let's just go to leave and we'll try that again back over to combat we'll go to day we're going to go over to the probably uh, airship actually no let's put in a land fortress okay try land fortress get the berlin and this is well over pointed it is how many points is it uh two uh, three thousand two hundred and forty six we are two thousand four hundred so we are yeah, about 800 points less. But flying over that flak field, two, four, five, two, four, six. Hang on, two, four, six. Yeah, 11 flak guns. Nah, I think I'll take my chance as well. The sponsors on the front, thank you very much. So obviously, initial volley is really painful. Um, we're going to go further forward here, and we are just uh, hitting some shrubbery here. Initial flamethrower blast is out, and hopefully it will absolutely carve the hell out of all of this. If we go to outside view, you see the damage we've taken is absolutely immense, uh, and we are no longer under command again, so command is an issue. Hmm. Actually, another issue is the fact that we've got no front of the uh, vessel left. Hmm, who would have thought that um, flamethrowers explode? Right, okay. Um, <laughs> let's try that once more. So, we're going to go over to uh, the airship again. Go to the Berlin. We're going to place the Berlin in a very strange place. Uh, we're going to place it... Actually, no, we'll place it there for now. What I was thinking is the initial volley that they fire is quite deadly. But we could always keep ourselves further back, and then once that volley's gone because we'll be outside of their sort of ideal range and a lot of the shots will miss and then we charge in um let's go over to building and see what we've got roughly around that sort of around that sort of uh cost we don't have anything around that sort of cost we're gonna just place two white lookouts then and when, obviously we're gonna, we're gonna give them a fair chance we're gonna place them right at the front like that in fact what we will do is turn them around to the correct orientation because they're currently not and um well, I'm going to move down. There's no point in being further up because you're just going to get hit by the flak field. So we're going to move forward. Um, I guess more speed on this thing would be quite good. And perhaps we could cheapen it out by removing this large suspendium chamber. I don't think we need something like that. So we're just about to get in. We are going to go on to rapid fire. Where there's no <laughs> reason for us at all to use aimed fire there. And I don't know why we get this initial sort of volley. And then it just stops. And there we go. There is this thing getting absolutely carved from the top. And once again, we are out of command. That seems to be a common occurrence there. And we're also on fire. I don't know if I managed to put that out, which is good. But we can't issue any more orders. Okay, that's becoming an issue now. The issue is that every time we get shot, we tend to go out of command. And as you can see, we can fairly effectively take out their defences. Just at the moment, um, well, there's no back end. But this is about to break. <laughs> um, okay. I'm not... Oh, oh, that's good. That's bad. Oh, yeah, okay. Right, we've still got a weapon left, but it's not, not very, not very well situated. Hmm longevity is the problem, isn't it? I'm not too sure what we can do about that. The weapon itself, brilliant. It doesn't have much HP, so when it gets hit, it tends to break. Another issue is that it... <laughs> it is also flammable. And we also got a command very quickly. Okay. Alright. New plan. We'll go for airship editor, open the design, open the Berlin up, and we're going to get rid of that. We don't need to be, we don't have this service ceiling, and I think it's sort of shown that basically our objective is to get there and then use the flamethrowers. We don't need to go over the top, it doesn't seem to work, it's not fast enough. If we change the armor, it probably wouldn't change anything. Heavy steel armor, 90 HP, uh, 24 blast damage absorption, and 12 piercing damage. Whereas if we went for reinforced wooden armor, it's just got less of everything. So we're using the best armor that we can, aside from, say, stone wall, but then we wouldn't be able to move. So, I mean, could we could we sort of get rid of maybe a couple of these things here? Um, we'll make it so it is a bit shorter, um, and we'll probably go for... We'll probably go for something a bit taller. We're going to get rid of some of this. Some of this, get rid of that. I'm just going to place them randomly just to hold them for now. And then we're going to go for one, two, three. Okay. 
There's three. Uh, these are technically not... Actually, no. Let's just go for an extra one. Um, I think an extra one ammo would be fine. And we're going to place the ammo stores a bit closer to home, like so. This will then go in... Hmm, where could this go? It could go anywhere it wants, really. But I think we need to, you know, be able to take off. And that's normally something you, you uh, want to do. We'll go over to lift and then down to suspendium chamber, which will fit in there quite nicely. Our server ceiling is, um, well, probably nothing when we connect this up. Uh, 27 meters is really low, but, but at the same time, I'm not really too concerned about that. Let me put two of these coal stores in and then that in there. Then we'll move back with some of the rest of this stuff and then see if all this connects up. We do have recommended crew of, well, a lot more, so we need more of these. So put that there, put that there. Actually, we'll move that further up, put that down, move that a little bit further back, put that in there, and that is technically okay. We can put them in there, and would that function? It probably would. I'm just very concerned that that bridge is going to get hit again, and because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cockpit in. I'm going to put a cockpit in probably... probably in this back bit here, just out of the way, and actually half of this isn't connected. That's a problem. I guess we could move this further down, like that. And what about the connections for this? I thought there was a ladder going up on this one. No, there's not. That's an issue. We'd have to move it further back. Like there. And then put these on the internal. Fire points in there is fine. These points in there, that is fine. And then, I guess we have to move that over to there. That cockpit can stay there, that can stay there. We can remove that, actually. No, put it there, wouldn't really matter. Okay, um, that all fits in. Whether or not this works or not is really up for debate. Let's go down to shapes and decorations. We're going to put in a bit of a slope there. We're going to put in something similar in there. And then we're going to flip that and then put that there. And there we go. Um, Berlin, definitely version 2 without a shadow of a doubt. I'm just going to double check to make sure it is a heavy steel armor, which it is. And then we'll put some flames on it like so. And we'll have a coat of arms in. Uh, it's not really going to fit in because it's just a big square. Okay, save the design. We will save that as a version 2, naturally. That is much different. And we'll see if that is as useless as the other one. So, building. White lookout. 1, 2. Airship. Berlin version 2. Service ceiling is just enough to get it where it needs to go. We are pretty much equally pointed. I am a little bit over pointed. Not much, though. 2,777 versus 2,704. Uh, normally, though, mm, yeah, <laughs> these things generally have the advantage. So we'll see how this one goes. So we're going to go on to rapid fire, and we're going to get in here, and hopefully this initial blast will take out most of what we need. And it does take some of these things out. One thing I never really thought, actually, I could move down underneath their cannons. Look at that, the bridge is getting absolutely blasted. But so is their structure. Right, just carve this little bit off and then we'll be sorted. So you can see the bridge at the top has been destroyed. So we're down to the uh, bridge at the back there. Well, the, I guess, yeah, the cockpit's been destroyed, right? I'm going to have to move back over a little because this thing is going to collapse on me at any point here. Um, it looks like we've lost one of the weapons, which is not great. Oh, there's a secondary uh, weapon gone. So we've just got one more of these flamethrowers. But they're also rapidly losing weapons themselves. Sadly, we can't move anymore. As you can see at the back there, we have lost this thing here, the engine. So that's not good. And we are slowly drifting back as well, which is uh, concerning. Let me see if I can target the cannons over there. It looks like they have lost most of their weapons now. In fact, the only thing they've got really is either pointing up or back, which is fine. We are able to still issue the commands there because we've got this little um, bridge at the back. We will target this thing then. Uh, technically, that oh, these are ah, I didn't notice that. These are individual sections. These, good grief, that's a stream of. <laughs> it's just hitting everything. Um, okay. Oh, there, yeah, that's just going absolutely ballistic now. <laughs> it's going all over the place. <laughs> right, that's a thing. Um. 
that's what I was waiting for. Um, okay. Improvements, yes. The issue, though, is surviving. I wonder what this would be like against airships. Probably not very good because it's also really low, like, flying now. I think I'm going to have to go back on what I said earlier, right at the start of the video, where I said that maybe the best thing to do is to have it go up and over. But no, I'm thinking now that maybe the best thing is just to put it on some large legs and walk it forward. It would probably be cheaper. Um, so technically, we can issue an order to move, and it will try to move. You can see the suspendium chamber activates and lifts it up, but it isn't able to move forward. So technically, we can't go there and win. But, I mean, we would be able to if we can just push it. Uh, just get the crew out, get a couple of guide uh, ropes on it, and just pull it forward. Job done. Okay. One more little test. We're going to go to combat. We're going to go for a day one. We're going to go for the airship and we'll place in the Berlin. Uh, sorry, no. Uh, uh, airship and we'll place in the Berlin version 2. And then we're going to place probably a land ship of around about the same cost. And unsurprisingly, we don't have... <laughs> We have an adjuster, technically, that's about the same price. Atlanta would not fare too well against us. Uh, Encroacher is just absolutely ludicrous. Could go with the legs, no. Um, that one we'd probably be able to destroy. I'm guessing that none of these then is really very good for what we need. Okay, let's go to what we want. Uh, 2,700 years, so we'll go for an airship then. Is anything around about that price? We've got the sandwich, which is going to be totally pointless against us. We've got the Sterling, we've got the Sunderland, which is just a carrying thing. The um, Sponson type weapon there. And then, oh, hang on, there's one, the Crane, which is what? Ah, that's just harpoons. That's just the thing that was lifting things up and moving it around just for the laughs. Um, no, I guess we could put a couple of basics against it. Let's try a couple of basics. The problem is the basics can go up here, so we'd, we'd, we would lose, we, you know, we'd lose straight away. Let's just see what would happen. I'm going to move further forward there, and um, you can see that, yeah, we've lost. <laughs> yeah, well, there's no way we can win this. Um, actually, they've come down towards us, which is a strange thing to do. So let's just move forward and give them a bit of a, a cheeky flame there. Um, although you notice that, um, oh, look at that. When it, when it hits, it causes an immense amount of damage. The problem being that, um, yeah, we are able to be, well, they're just outmaneuvering us. Okay. I'm not too sure. Ah, hang on. There we go. That might, uh, that might even things just a little bit. Yes, we've, we've, we've managed to effectively slice the front of that vessel off, which is pretty good. That's all you can ask for in life, really. And looks like the tanks on these ones are going to be absolutely hammered as well. So, uh-oh, I was just about to say I'm going to order our, our vessel to move back over, but um, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> doesn't look like that is um, really necessary anymore because the thing is broken. The bridge, once again, is completely knacked. Um, so we've just got the cockpit left there. This is the only thing that is still remaining. So we just need to order them to go up and turn round. And then hopefully uh, we will be able to take this out. I was, obviously, the good arc of fire means that we can just pretty much flame this with uh, impunity. And eventually they will lose it. I never thought we would have lost this. And I still think we should have lost it. It's just a way of the, you know, the AI got closer and they shouldn't have done. Because um, close is sort of our thing. Okay, overall then. I'm not happy with the design. I think it could have definitely been built a bit better, but I'm not entirely sure what that would be. Maybe ignore the... ignore it... ignore it... Um, ignore, ignoring its need to fly. I think that's the best thing. So just have it on a ground vessel. That would cheapen it up. The issue, though, is still that we have no way of get, keeping these things alive longer. Apart from placing like loads of like extraneous parts that get hit first. I don't think there's any other way of doing it really. But we'll, you know, we can have a mess around and change that up. Um, this is just this thing to take on. <laughs> um, obviously, it will be able to take on things like um, flyers and um, planes and that sort of thing. But with its uh, service sailing, we so poor. It's sort of there's no point in flying at this stage. And we are using the best armor. We need better armor to to get that in there or some way of buffing up our HP on these things. I mean, we could, I'll tell you what we could do. We could go with some repairs. That might fix the problem. We'll go with like um, a repair center. So like a, um, a machine shop and such, and that would be able to repair a lot of the damage. That might be the way forward, but that would mean it will be a lot heavier. So it's definitely going to be a ground vessel. Okay, I think that's where we're trending, and I might give that a go. If you want to see that, then by all means let me know. If you think there's any way to improve the design, then once again, let me know in the comments, and we will go from there. Hope you have enjoyed this little mess around and trying um, the large flamethrower. It is effective, um, not as... 
yeah, I think I think you have to. You can't just slap it on any old vessel and expect it to work. Whereas cannons and other things are a bit more universal, a bit more generic. Whereas that thing is definitely more specialised. But I've had fun messing around with it. Hope you have. Uh, <laughs> hope you had some fun watching that as well. If you've got any ideas and suggestions for either changes for that build or additions and improvements, then let me know as well as any builds you would like to see as well. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.